the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time where you are uh, arranging situations and scenarios that we can pause and take the time to get into your word because your word is, is what we need to further understand what our relationship with you is supposed to be about. We thank you, dear Father, that you have found a way to touch each and every one of us in, in uh, our unique way. In, in, in the unique way that you have established that relationship with us. And we just thank you that, that you have that kind of love and that kind of grace. For none of us are worthy, dear Lord. Come on now. But you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son. Yes. Who took the wrath that we each should take. We, we are the ones that deserve it. But Lord, instead, out of love, because you knew that it was just too much. Yes. And that you yourself, in the in the form of your son, took the wrath, put that sin nature on, upon yourself, and you became that perfect sacrifice for us. Yes. Oh, what grace, yes. what mercy. Yes. And Lord, to help us to uh, soften our hearts and soften our spirits so that we yield uh, not to ourselves, yes. but to you, yes. and to the way that you would have us to demonstrate what you've done for us yes. and what you've done, what you can do for the law mm. because they can have that same blessing that we have. Yes. We have joy, dear Lord, not for everything, but in everything because we know that the victory yeah. is already won. Mm. So again, we thank you thank that you. this day is a day that you've made mm. and already we, we are thinking about you. Yes. We are here to worship you, learn more yeah. about you. Yes. And we want to pass that forward, dear Lord, yes. so that others can likewise experience the blessing that we experience. Yes. We want to thank you for all the resources that we have. Yes. Whether they're material resources or spiritual resources, Lord, we thank you for the resources that you've given us mm -hmm. so that we, again, can go out there and, and relate to others and, and just be to others and show love to others like you demonstrated to us. Yes. Father, forgive us where we fail. Hmm. Lord, we wait for you all. And we say these things and many, many more, spoken and unspoken, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey, I got I got my background, virtual background on, so if it, if it gets too slow, I, I'll take it off. Because that sometimes slows the said the uh sometimes it affects the bandwidth. The uh, that. Well, I mean, you're all the way out in space, man. <laughs> no, man, the, the world, right? <laughs> hey, look, this, this is a world ministry. So we're going to go ahead and reach out to the world. And mm -hmm. and with that in mind, Bishop, I, I was sitting there. We will continue on. We talked about last week. We we're going to just continue on and hearing the voice of God. And what, 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 I, what I did, let me make sure I get this right. Put it right here. Here it is. What, what, what I did was a continuation of that. And one of the things I thought it was very important to do is to uh, uh, give some scriptures to lay a foundation that, that I think sometimes may hinder people from hearing God's voice. And, and I was piggybacking off that conversation that I had with you all, that I had with a coworker. Uh, there was uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Catholic brother, and he said, I never heard from the voice. I never heard God. I never heard from God. I told you that Thursday. And and I was thinking about it because he felt bad about the fact that I never heard from God. And I will submit to you, there's probably quite a few people that may feel that they have not heard the voice of God, or they think there needs to be something special and unique about uh the ability to hear from God, but I will tell you that God has said, I'm talking to you whether you save or not save. I'm calling you if you're not saved, and I'm mentoring you or more what do you call it? I'm saying I'm I'm helping you, informing you. I'm he's the what's like the potter's clay. He, he I'm, I got you on the wheel if you if you listen to me. I can work with you. So I want to hear, I want you to hear me. So we put that in that central thought of discussion. 
And that was Brother Jackson, like I said, the central idea of the text. CTI, right? C C I T or something like that, right? And, and it's that how to actually live life, and that's what we want to talk about. Live life in trusting faith, right? In God's voice. Moment by moment. For he and you, this is the key piece right here, and I think. This has been probably the reason why we, this is maybe one of the hindering factors, but this is the point is, for he and you can get to know one another, right? Uh, okay. Paul said in the Philippians 3.10 that I may know him. Who he's talking about? He's talking about Christ. He's talking about the Savior. He's talking about God. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the Godhead. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformal to his death. Now, that's Paul saying from a Christian perspective, even I guess even a person that's not even saved is the fact that I don't know him, right? So we, we all come into that part of saying, I need to know him. And then the question is, Brother Addis, I put that before and we put it here now, is that he needs to know you, you know, because in the end, this is Matthew 7, 21. He said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. But he that does is the will, look at that, and it's very critical that he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. He said, many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, Brother Jackson, in that name? In that name of cast out devils, look at this man. And in that name, there are many wonderful works. Now it's a question, but that's what they're saying. They're asking that. And, and, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you, all right? So it's to, I'm laying a case of foundation that is the importance of us letting God know us. But I also want to throw this in there before I go forward is that a lot of us don't want God to know us as detailed as we <laughs> we know ourselves. Individually uh -huh. I'm talking about. Because there's the when I get into some other scriptures you're going to see is that the, 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 and I put one of the scriptures that I put in there is the heart of man is deceitfully wicked. So, and, and, and the importance of that is understand that despite all that, and there's Jimmy here, despite all that, he still loved me. He still loved the world. He still died on the cross for me, despite what he knows about me. And Bishop, mm -hmm. I want to throw this in there too. When when he said, I never knew you, and when I'm going to lay the case down on some of these scriptures, he knows man. He knows man's heart. He knows man's wickedness and everything else. I think when he said, I never knew you is, you check this around with me as a thought, is that if you get, if I get to know you, and if you get to believe me and start following my will, I will mold you, and the person I really want to get to know is the transformation of who you will be, who you've been predestined to be, not what you are. And I and I looked at that when I even thought of Brother Jackson, and I talk about all, raising our own children. You know, you ever notice about the fact is that you love your child as a baby growing up, making all kinds of mess and everything else, but you, you're really never looking at your child so much as to them at this moment, but what they will be. Their potential, that's right. Yeah, you love the potential of that child. And you know that you love your role in trying to help raise and mold that child to be, you know, be be a representative of an Addison family. You know what I mean? Be a this is this is my grandchild. I want one day to say not only look at the child as a little baby, but you need to know where that child is going. At least it's how I want to play a role in you know molding and shaping that child. And I can only think that God 
coming to as a father saying, look, I know what they are. <laughs> I know they got issues, but that you, you need to see what they will be. You know, even what Jesus said on that cross and said, he said the joy that was set before him, brother Addison, it wasn't before he didn't see about the evil of us, but the children that will come from his death and resurrection. So when I looked at John 10, 27, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Look at that other key component in that scripture. And what? I know them. And here's the other key component in that scripture. And they follow me. That goes back up to Matthew's 20, you know, chapter seven. What he said is, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He said, those are people I love because they, they just like John 10, 27, they hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Now, with the scripture I'm going to use for this, and then we get, you know, I'll just give you the outline of the scriptures that we'll use, and we don't have to use these scriptures at all. I just want to make sure you know they're in there. Just a lady case of foundation where I'm going to is that he group number four, because I already just read those two, the uh, the three first three already. Hebrews 5 11 through 14 is talking about the warning against apostasy, right? That, and that's going to talk about the falling and the. the, the the issues and, and watching out for false teachers and all that other stuff that we need to look at. And then Proverbs 3, 5 says, look at this now, because that is he needs to know you, right? He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, right? And you right. know the rest of that verse, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And once again, he shall direct your path. He can't direct your path unless you hear him. Right? You need to know him. And the only way you get to know him is to trust in him. Just like the whole sister's idea of the text is trust in the Lord, have faith in him. But in Hebrews 11, 6 said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that what? He is. Yes. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. One of the rewards is you getting to know him. One of the rewards is that you're getting to see the benefits that he gives for those who seek him, right? Just like a father trying to raise his child. And then I put in there, and I, and I actually put a, a whole bunch of these scriptures in there. I want y'all to know this because I wonder sometimes why we don't want, some of us may not want to hear God. Some of us may never have heard from God or believe they haven't heard from God. It's because to have a relationship with God, for God to know you, is brother asked is to know your thoughts, your inner person. You know what I mean? The person who have thoughts that nobody else can see. You know, brother Jackson. You know the person who has desires that are forbidden. You know he see he knows those thoughts right. that we have. We we need to understand that having a personal relationship with God is you can't play with Him. You can't hide from Him. You can't deceive Him because he knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. He says right here in Matthew 9, 4, Jesus knowing their thoughts says, wherefore thank you evil in your hearts. I put it here, I, I want you to know that because I'm saying that maybe sometimes a lot of us, we, 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 we have this, uh, we, we, some of us may have, I ain't say all, oh, I'll just put me, some of us, don't you know you come to God you come to God open he sees you and in Genesis right. I put down here Genesis 6 5 and 6 and I only put in a portion of it said God saw the wickedness of man he saw the the the, the shortcomings he saw all the, the he saw he repented for making us y'all at one time you know, in mm -hmm. his spirit strived against us in uh, Genesis 6, 5 and 6. And I, I want to let you know where I'm really going to is that being that we we have this other part of us, this 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 short, these short and forbidden thoughts and everything else that we battle here in our mind, 
that some of us may have still have the same thoughts that Adam and Eve had after they ate the fruit, which is, I heard the voice of God and I ran and hid myself because I was naked. Now we know he was not, they weren't talking about physically naked. They were talking about their now have all the thoughts, all the knowledge of good and evil in them. And, and they were they were exposed to 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 the good and the bad of man. And and they hid themselves because they didn't want they didn't want to be revealed. And I wonder what is that's what's happening to all of us in the world perspective. Big thing when I talk sometimes talking from the world is that we don't really come to God sometimes because we don't like who we are. And some of us don't come to God because until we're broken, until we realize I need him. Some of us come to God already and said, I already need him. <laughs> and, and I thank him every day because I know I can come to him. I know I can't come to everybody else. I know I can't tell everybody else my business, my thoughts, and all, my inner thoughts and everything else, but I can come to him. And you know what? He wants us to, so he can get to know us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I added this scripture, I sent these slides out last night, I added this scripture in there, is that it's very critical for us to know that there's now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. He don't want you to come condemn, he just wants you to come as you are. And I know Jim one time said that that's not scriptural, but that is scriptural, because he said the good, the bad, bring them in the banquet. That's what he said, bring them all. And he, he died for the whole world because he wants the whole world, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whether you're gay, straight, or whatever. He said, come, because he's the potter. He's the one that's going to do it. But the bottom line is, who walks not after flesh, but after the spirit. I put that in there. We might not hold that whole scripture. Then I put it in there, 1 Samuel 16, 7. That's when, you know, God looks at the heart of you. He looks at the heart of every last one of us. And we don't want to be condemned because he does. We want to be exposed to him. Because I know the world loves to go ahead and condemn you, but Jesus is not here to condemn you. He's the savior, right? In fact, I think, and let me throw this thought in here before, and I just want to show you the scripture, then we go through it on discussion is, if you come to him as you are, recognizing who you are, now you can, you have a starting point of going forward with him. I think Bishop one time said, it's not it's not where you are when you first come in. It's just an issue of if you've been in for 30, 40 years, what what have you changed at all? <laughs> have you moved? <laughs> have you you know, so think about that. But the bottom line is when God looks at you, he looks at your heart. He talked about in first Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said in Samuel, look not on his continents or his height or his stature. In other words, don't look at the outward appearance because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For a man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10, and I just put the scripture that really matters, is when God saw man, and he still says it, the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things. Mm -hmm. And then Exodus, and if that's the case, we may think we are, Exodus, when Moses said unto, they said unto Moses, speak thou with us. I always wanted to ask that question. Y'all, you ever thought about this one? Somebody got chatting. I can't see because I'm talking. So I don't know if you chat to me or not. Uh, he says here, and they said unto Moses, speak thou with us. And we were here. Listen to this. But let not God speak to us. And I always ask that question. I wonder if one of y'all can even, as we get into discussion, why did they say this? He said, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And the only reason I keep thinking about that is back from the beginning in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They answer the fruit. I mean, Eve said, do not eat of this truth, neither touch it lest you die. Mm -hmm. And then three, four, and the serpent lied and said, you shall not surely die. 
But the question is, here's back to here, the whole point of this, hearing the voice of God, are we running from God because we're naked and exposed and don't understand he's here to close you. We're sitting here trying to hide from him. Mm -hmm. They said is, and it, I'm just I'm just thinking about the guy I talked about from Catholic faith, and I'm whether this is a, con, a consistent thing with the rest of us is, and they heard the voice of God walking in the in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden, and we start our discussion. Open up with you is why did they hide? That, that, that's that's my opening question. And maybe that's why sometimes we can't hear from God is because we don't want to, we're hiding from him. So we don't want to be exposed. 